again, my friends. Um, hope you're all well after Easter, etc. Um, excuse my little moan over the <laughs> the other weekend, but um, I noticed a few people unsubscribed. But hey, that's that's cool. Uh, I, I had to say what I felt, and what I felt is what I said. So, end of story. Um, what I wanted to do was answer another one of these questions that I keep seeing coming up in the Reaper user group forums about EQ before compression or compression before EQ, etc, etc. So, let's get into it. I, what's my opinion? I don't have an opinion. I don't have a fast rule. It depends on what I'm dealing with and what I want to achieve. This is my whole philosophy on dealing with EQ and compression. But what I would like to give you is an alternative view and some little ideas you could use uh, on creative use of EQ into compression and out of compression into EQ, etc. Okay, so let's go first and foremost on controlling the bass. Okay, so let's. Uh, get my headphones for a second let me just do something here and uh, grab my headphones um, and let's play a little bit of this bass that we've got going on here so let's have a listen Okay, so that's, you know, kind of as I recorded it, a DI, I'm going to reamp it, I'm going to do all kinds of shit, I'm actually going to replay it, never mind reamp it, but um, what I have done now is I've put on, I had some effects on it before, but let's forget that, we're talking about what we're doing now. So on this virtual mix rack here, what I've got going on, let me get it out of this holder and onto your screen and get rid of my face so what I've got going on is I've got an EQ into a compressor into another EQ now this doesn't have to be these particular EQs it doesn't have to be this particular compressor it doesn't have to be anything it's about what you do going in so when I listen to that bass let me just pull this over Get rid of that. We don't need that. Um, and let's give it a listen. It's fairly tepid, <laughs> that bass, okay? So what the first thing I would do is let's go up to about 110 and boost some bottom end. Possibly take out some of the high-end stuff. What I'm looking for here is just purely a bass tone. So take some of that out. Yeah. A little bit of drive, maybe. And then drop out a little bit of really low stuff. Now let's move on to the compressor let's um, start bringing in some compression compression here so we can compress this low end I want to compress it quite a lot with a reasonable ratio uh, medium I want a fast release but I want a kind of medium to slow Tight. I don't want to lose my transients here. Okay, a little bit of makeup. Yeah, circuit two. Yeah, I think circuit two is a little bit of a slower attack, more of an optical kind of thing. Okay, so what we've done, let's go to 110. 
ground and take some of that out on the next EQ. And now what do we do? 3.2. Let's boost some of that back in. Play again. A little bit high end. you to focus on is the low end and the control almost like comp it is compression on the low end but the note sustains now I've overemphasized this a little bit hit down some of the drive let's give it a higher ratio we can create some distortion the faster the attack time faster the release time we can actually bring in some distortion if we want which you can hear if I slow down the attack time Slow down the attack time, or fat, speed up the attack time. Sorry, you only listen to this. You can hear this distortion in there now, which wasn't there before. We can slow down the release. We can hear that distortion now a lot. So let's slow that down. Let's play this again. Now. Let's concentrate on this EQ, the, the secondary EQ. Now, the advantage here is if you want to create more bass, you now have the bottom end under control. You have it compressed. So you can turn it up and look, look what's happened. I've cranked it and it's not blowing out. Okay, I don't want to do that now. So let's play again. I, I don't know. I hope you're trying to. I'm trying to kind of get across the myriad of tonal possibilities you've got between these two EQs and the compressor. You you can create whatever tone you want. I can, I'm I'm sitting here starting to play now because I, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. You can use two. I'm using two different EQs. You can use two EQs the same. I like using two different EQs because they give give you different EQ curve going in as to what comes out and etc etc so you get some um unpredictability I don't know how else to describe it but you know okay guys third attempt at this due to my total incompetence I'm trying to kind of do this live as I did the live stream on Saturday with um OBS and I'm changing scenes and I'm keep forgetting to pull plugins into the window or get my face out of the way so you can see the plugins so without further ado i'm going to get my face out of the way um and i'm going to talk to you to, about the the top end and how we deal with the top end now what i want to do is play you this track as i mixed it with the band um, Gary is a good friend of mine I've spoken to him tonight to ask his permission to use this and thank you thank you thank you Gary you're a you're a dude um, the album is on my website it is free to download 
So please go check them out, download it, do them a favour, help them out. I'd really appreciate that. But this is a, a band called um, Slow Down Missy. Um, and this is the opening track from the album. So let me play you how the vocal sounded when we mixed this. This is the sound we wanted, so I'm not going to ex excuse myself for it, but let's see what we can do with it after that. Let's lose our regrets Let the bad stuff go We can use autocorrect and then air song with the show Tonight, it's all scars and guitars Okay, so that's what we did originally with the vocal. Now, going into this um, EQ, pushing into uh, a compressor and then coming out of the compressor into another EQ philosophy that we're talking about in this video, let me show you how I would do this now. now this isn't a, an uncommon way of doing things. You know, Andrew Sheps has talked about it. Many of the big mixers have talked about it. Um, it's about shaping your compression, shaping your EQ, shaping your sound, you know. So, as I said in the bass, you would push in the frequencies you maybe want to control and then boost them back up when you come out the other end or cut them back down, whatever. Um, so let's just go through this. So what I'm doing here... Now, I have tweaked this a little bit to Gary's vocal. This is different for every vocal, so please don't copy my setting. Listen, you got to listen, you know. So what we're doing, we're attenuating uh, 100 hertz. We're boosting quite a lot, actually, uh, on a broad bandwidth at 8K into the compressor. Let's just listen to what that sounds like on its own. Uh, well, solo the vocals actually, just listen to it like that. Let's lose our regrets. Drop it out. Let the bad stuff go. We can use autocorrect and then add okay. song with the. So let's pull in the compressor. Let's lose our regrets. Let the bad stuff go. We can use autocorrect and then add song with the show. So I hope you can hear then it, the compressor's really reacting to that high end. It's almost acting like a de yeah? Which is kind of the point. Uh, but let's bring in the, the next EQ. Now what we're doing in the next EQ is boosting back the low end that we took away. Uh, we're attenuating a little bit of the top end that we pushed into the compressor, but I'm also boosting it because it's not giving me quite the top end that I want. So let's, uh, I'll drop it out and I'll bring it in as halfway through. Let's lose our regrets. Let the bad stuff bring go. It in. We can use autocorrect and then add song with the show. But tonight, it it's all scars and guitars, war wounds and blue. So I hope you can hear that. That really uh, is a big difference. So let's put it in and out of the mix. Uh, let's bring it into the mix. Uh, I'll just drop the effects in and out. I mean, this is on the vocal bus here that I'm doing this, but I would not sometimes do this in every vocal channel. It's up to you how detailed you want to go. I'm just doing this to show you in this video. So I'm going to drop it in and out on the vocal bus and you can see the difference. Let's lose our regrets. Let the bad stuff go. Dropping it out. We can use autocorrect and edit song with the show. Tonight, it's all scars and guitars. Bring it in. Wild wounds and blue songs and a lot of Maybelline. You know you need the Maybelline. Why does it feel like it's over? Why does it feel that you won't let me in? Why does it feel that you won't let me in? It 
needs adjustment because I didn't mix with this in, but you can hear that it's over compressing some parts of it. But you can hear, hopefully, in the beginning, you can hear the difference. It brings out a lot more presence in the vocals, pushes them a little bit more up front, um, and can really, you know, you can shape it how you want. This is the whole point because you've got, you can control what is going into your compressor as well as what's coming out of your compressor. And this can be any EQ. It doesn't have to be a, a, you know, a pool tech or whatever. It can be, you know, re, re EQ, whatever. It, it doesn't have to be anything special. You just have to think about what do you want to push into your compressor and what do you want, what do you want your final sound to be? And what do you want to control along the way? Okay. I really hope that was helpful folks. And, um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers now.